Good morning! Today's top news story is about folks around the world traveling, especially during summer, and the fashion-related problems that they are encountering. Swollen feet and blisters, struggling on what and how to pack, feeling as though they brought all the wrong things and even feeling the overwhelming exasperation on the bra situation for a Thai front top. But don't worry, we've got you covered. We'll take you live to our specialist who will share everything you need to know so you can have the most incredible trip. Over to you, Jess. Sorry, wrong feed. First things first, things that come in clutch when you're traveling, fashion tape. Fashion tape is essentially double-sided tape that sticks to your skin, that sticks to your clothes, and you can use it for a variety of different things. You can use it to flatten down an annoying lapel that keeps popping up. You could also use this for a strap that just keeps falling down and it's driving you crazy. There are so many use cases, and this is just one of those things to keep in your purse always for any sort of fashion disaster, fashion emergency, especially when you're traveling. In the same realm, blister pads. When you travel, oftentimes you're walking, you're adventuring, you're in different terrain. Even if your shoes are relatively comfortable, chances are you might get a blister. So blister pads are kind of just like padded band-aid circles, spheres, ovals, they come in different sizes, different shapes. And you just put it on a spot where you're gonna get a blister, you feel a blister coming in, you notice your shoe rubbing against that part of your foot, pop a blister pad on, your feet will thank you. Next, a lint roller or some sort of like silicone lint scraper. I feel like I don't need to explain why. We know the purpose and point of a lint roller, but to remind you, they're handy. Also, a Tide pen. A Tide pen is so nice because if you're somewhere where you're eating a lot of saucy foods, a lot of foods that have the potential to stain, especially pastas, a Tide pen is going to save you. If you like to smell good, if you are a fan of perfumes and just smelling nice, something I love to do that every time I've shared it with someone, they're like, I've never thought of that and that is so genius. What you're gonna do before you pack your clothes is you're gonna spritz them with your favorite perfume. That perfume is going to kind of soak, kind of marinate, if you will, into your clothes. So then when you pack them, they stay nice and smelling good and it's like a pre-perfumed outfit. Also something that can be really helpful if you wanna smell nice, but you wanna change around your scent is to bring those little perfume sample bottles, throw them in your toiletry bag or even in your purse makeup bag, they just, super duper handy, and then you always just have something to smell nice. Now for on your bag, two accessories that I really like to just have attached to my bag, both because stylistically it looks like a cute little accessory, but also it has a practical use, is a little scarf and or a claw clip. A lot of places when you travel to them are hot or humid, and heat and humidity oftentimes ruin hairstyles. So if you left with curly, gorgeous hair in the morning, you curled it or maybe you straightened it, by midday it might not look as, you know, crisp and fresh. Having a claw clip to just pop your hair up into or a little scarf to change up the hairstyle is really nice because you stay looking good and you get your hair up and out of the way. If you have any sort of funky neckline or back, open back type of pieces you're packing on your trip, a sticky bra is going to come in so clutch. And I know some people don't like sticky bras. There are also just like individual things. There's a couple brands that I'm gonna recommend down below that I've personally tried. They are waterproof, they work really well, the stick stays, the hold stays. And the final thing that comes in clutch, if you're a little bit more on the extra side as I am, is a hand steamer and it is so good. It's small, you can just easily pack it in your bag, you fill it up with water at your hotel or Airbnb, you plug it in, you let the water warm, and you can steam out all your wrinkles in your clothes, which is so nice because if you're traveling for summer or for warm weather, oftentimes you're gonna have things that are cotton or linen, which happen to be more prone to wrinkling. It's very nice to steam those wrinkles out. Now let's talk don'ts before we talk do's, because I think don'ts when traveling are sometimes far more guiding than do's. First, do not just bring cute shoes because they're cute. You can totally bring your cute shoes, but don't only bring cute shoes because they're cute. Because 
a lot of times. The cute shoes are not practical for walking. And like I said, when you're traveling, you often do a lot of walking. And if you have shoes that pinch your feet, give you major blisters, are just generally uncomfortable to walk long distances in, you will be sorely regretting not bringing one comfy pair of sneakers. So always just pack a pair of sneakers. Always make sure you just bring one and some good socks that are, you know, like nice socks, not just like the fashion socks. Those have no padding. Get good socks. Walking all day in loafers and docks, especially loafers with no socks. Oh wow, this is like Dr. Seuss over here. Will kick your butt. In the same vein, do not wait and save things to break in on your trip. Again, this sounds like a no-brainer, but I cannot even begin to tell you how many people I've met who do this with jeans, with shoes, with an outfit, a dress. They didn't test it out or kind of break it in before the trip. And they're just like going straight into the trip with shoes that are not broken in, jeans that are not broken in, and same, same vibes. Make sure you try all your outfits along, even if it's a new purchase, even if it's a new thing that you got for this trip, try it on, especially for the girly pops who need to wear a certain kind of bra with this piece. You need to make sure you pack the right bra or you might realize, oh my gosh, I should, I don't know, have, the, have this tailored, have this adjusted, or I need to bring a safety pin because this sits like this. Trying on things before you go and not just going at it blindly is gonna save you a lot of frustrations because once you're wherever you are, you have to wear it with the chance of fashion disaster, something falling out, popping out, getting a horrible blister, or two, you don't even get to wear it, which then, there's a word in Tagalog, it's called sayang. It means, what a waste! So, it would be sayang if you don't even get to wear your cute new thing. Another important instance is if you're bringing along a crochet or knit piece, definitely wear it at least once because crochet and knit pieces stretch out in different ways throughout the day. And something that fit one way at the beginning of the day might fit an entirely different way by the end of the day. So getting to test it out before your trip, again, allows you to think through and plan and decide how you might wanna style this. This one's more specific for New York City, and this is very much taken from people who have shared this to me who live in New York City. Do not wear flat, open-toed shoes in New York City. New York City locals are adamant about this one, especially when tourists come for the summer and they see people walking around with flip-flops or like just these flat, open-toed shoes. You know, I love New York. I love to visit New York. But New York, there are unique substances around and there are also critters around and having flat open toed shoes exposes you to the elements. And the last don't that is arguably the most important, don't be stubborn on sunscreen. Because a lot of times when people travel, they're like, oh, I won't mind a little sun. The UV index is so different in other places and the way, especially depending on where you are equator wise, the sun is going to affect you so different than how it affects you at home. So especially if you're closer to the equator, that sun is gonna be so strong and you're gonna crisp up, you're gonna get so burnt and I don't want you guys to do that. So do not skimp on sunscreen. Make sure you apply it in the morning and make sure you regularly reapply it so you can make sure you're protected, your skin stays safe. And I actually have a product recommendation that goes with this. I just discovered this product and I wanna recommend it to you. And I will have it linked below. It's called Spot My UV. They're these little spots that you put on. You put on one per day and you use the same one throughout the whole day. You apply it to clean, dry skin. And when you first apply it, it's purple. And then once you apply your sunscreen and you're in the sun, the patch is going to turn clear. It doesn't give you any tan lines or anything like that. And then when it's time to reapply, you're gonna notice it start turning purple again. And once it's purple, that means you're no longer protected from the UV rays. That's when you reapply and then it returns clear again until it's time to reapply again later. I think this is a super cool thing and it's just so small. When you have it on and it's clear, you don't see anything, you don't notice anything. And it's kind of nice because if you're busy all day, especially if you're just like exploring, you're adventuring. Reapplying sunscreen is not like top of mind sometimes, you kind of just forget. So having like a nice little reminder is so nice. And also if you need some recommendations for good sunscreens, I got you a link a few of my favorites below that don't leave a white cast, that work on different skin colors, that work on different skin types, and also just, you know, are good sunscreens. Now let's talk about some do's. The first do is gonna kind of piggyback off the last don't because this is kind of like the, the inverse complimentary piece that goes with it. Do try all your outfits on that you're planning on bringing, but beyond the reason that I shared in the last tip, it's also so helpful 
to kind of plan through your outfits a bit. You don't have to pre-plan every single outfit, but definitely trying things on and kind of pairing and mixing and matching gives you a really good idea of what you could wear and how you could wear it. Because there have been times in the past that I've packed and I didn't really think through outfits. I thought about items that I wanted to bring. See where I'm going? I picked cute tops, I picked cute bottoms, I picked cute shoes or whatever. I get on the trip, nothing matches, nothing goes together. And I'm like, why didn't I think through the fact that these were gonna have to be outfits? How am I gonna pull these together? Playing with the idea of outfits a little bit more than just bringing cute pieces is going to save you a lot of frustration on your trip. It just makes it so much less stressful. And if you especially like to plan, another pro tip is you can actually take photos of all of your outfits so that way you have them cataloged and you can remember the outfit. You can easily recreate it. You don't have to go through the process of creating an outfit on your trip. And some people do this. I've seen this on TikTok and I actually think it's quite genius. I will be doing this for my next trip. If you tap and hold on your iPhone of a photo of someone, it'll highlight the subject in that photo and you can actually copy it and then you paste it in your notes app and you can create an entire catalog of all your outfits and you could categorize it by like night out outfits, uh, daytime exploring outfits, like date night outfits. You can do this like regardless of a trip or not, but you can create an entire library of your outfits to make your life easier. Next, do research where you're traveling. Research the vibe, research the feel, the practical landscape of where you're traveling. I have heard of so many people who travel to Paris and they'll bring like heels or really like, I don't know, wedges, like really big heels. A lot of Paris' streets are cobblestone, so people fall <laughs> and they get injured because, you know, trying to walk with heels or something that's more wedgy or, you know, just a bit higher height can be kind of tricky on the cobblestones and you don't want to roll your ankle. You want to stay cute, you want to stay looking good, and most of all, you want to stay not injured. So definitely bring your loafers or your sneakers or your ballet flats or whatever, but by researching where you're going first, it gives a very helpful indication of how and what to pack. Same vibe, do think through the activities that you're going to be doing on your trip. Is it more hiking? Is it more leisure walking around? Is it more visiting museums or religious places or doing local craft type things? Like think through what you're doing and then pack accordingly to that. Because if you're traveling somewhere and you're walking around all day, you're going on some intensive like tours, you're climbing up mountains, you're, I don't know, just hiking around, you're walking for eight hours a day, Again, you wanna make sure you're bringing comfy shoes and comfy socks. If you're taking a pottery class or a pasta making class, it's likely you're gonna get some schmutz on your clothes and you wanna make sure that what you're wearing is not like your most expensive, fabulous shirt that you're gonna be gutted if it gets some clay or pasta sauce on it that just doesn't really come out later. Another example, if you're traveling somewhere like the Vatican that is more conservative and a religious institution, you wanna make sure you have some sort of a cover up, a light jacket, a scarf, a little breezy button up to throw on over top because exposed shoulders not allowed. I also think having some sort of breezy button up with you at all times when you're traveling is always just a good idea regardless of if you're visiting somewhere like the Vatican or not because it's sometimes just nice to have a little cover up. Sometimes the sun is too hot, your arms are getting super tan disproportionately to the rest of your body. Last thing to do that is so important is to test out your purses. And you wanna be really realistic with this one because I think a lot of times when it comes to traveling and wanting to look cute, we kind of idealize in our mind. We're like, you know what, it won't be that bad. It'll be totally fine, but it'll be cute. It'll look nice, it'll be great. But then in practicality, in the real use case, you're like, damn, I wish I would've just been a little bit more practical and realistic. So what I mean by this is, if you're planning on bringing a really cute little shoulder bag or maybe like one of those little handbags that you hold like this, all day, test that out for a day. Think through, do you really want to carry in your hand your purse all day? What if you have a coffee? Okay, now both your hands are taken. What if you need to open the door? Okay, let me shimmy this into this arm. Like really think through it. And sometimes there are situations where you wanna bring a clutch or you wanna bring a hand purse or you wanna bring like a little shoulder bag. Sometimes it leans on the more impractical side and it's just not as worth it. So I would say test out your purses, really think through what's realistic and practical for you. Some people are gonna be like, heck yeah, I love the little shoulder purse, love the, the mini bag. And some people are gonna be like, you know what? I want the crossbody. And some people like me want both. 
So you could pack like two purses. You could bring a practical crossbody and then you can bring a cute like going out at night type of clutch handbag. So then you have both options. But for real, be practical and realistic, especially because there are a lot of pickpocketers out there and we wanna make sure we don't get our passports and our wallets stolen. If you have any outfits that you're recreating from Pinterest or Instagram that you've seen someone post and you're like, oh my gosh, that looks like such a cute outfit. I have all the same pieces. I'll just pack those and then recreate it. Again, test it out because sometimes being very exposing, being a creator influencer myself, sometimes outfits look good in photos and look very different in real life. In the sense of in a photo, you're capturing a moment and you're kind of like, posing and you're making it look like the best it can look. Maybe you're tucking it in, maybe you're kind of holding the shirt in a certain way and it kind of gives a certain vibe. Whereas in movement, in real life, it's gonna look a little different and it can still totally look cute, but making sure that you have that expectations versus reality already tested out, again, comes in clutch. Jumping into the packing section now, let's start off with probably the most important one when it comes to packing your clothes. Roll not fold because it's space saving. You can pack more in there, especially if you're doing something like a carry-on. Some airlines do weigh the carry-ons and sometimes they don't. So sometimes you can get away with packing a little bit more in your carry-on and you can really roll some extra clothes in there. Beyond packing carry-on though, it's super nice when you're just trying to fit a lot in a packing cube, you're trying to stay organized. Maybe you're just trying to make the most out of your luggage space, rolling versus folding saves space and allows you to pack more. Second thing, especially when you roll in bulk. So this is gonna be great for your more delicate fabrics like silk, linens, anything that is more prone to wrinkling. If you roll in, let's say, a set of maybe five to 10 garments. You roll them up like a sushi roll. The extra thickness of the fabric is going to spread the fabric out a little bit more. So it's not going to get those really intense wrinkles. They still might wrinkle a little bit, but not in the same way as if you rolled each piece individually. Now, of course, this is contingent upon what fabric you have. If it's silk versus like a denim, a denim doesn't wrinkle in the same way. So you don't need to roll your denim in bulk. But again, if it's those thinner materials that are super wrinkle prone, like silk, linens, uh, some cottons. Rolling bulk can be super helpful. Across the board though, I roll everything I'm packing regardless if I'm bulk rolling or individually rolling. I just like to keep things rolled. I feel like it's more organized, space saving. And though they might get wrinkles, they're better wrinkles than the hard horizontal wrinkles of folding things into rectangles and squares. If you're packing any shoes, especially ones that definitely are a little bit nicer, you wanna make sure they stay intact, stuff the toe with your socks so they don't get squished and compressed. I have this pair of flats that I brought like two or three trips ago and I did not do this. I completely forgot about this and um, they, they were all squished and I'm, I'm still de-squishing them. Avoid my mistake stuff the toes of your shoes, especially the nicer ones, especially any sort of like leather or flat because oftentimes the fabric that they're made of are very impressionable. Staying in the same realm of nice shoes and dipping also into nice purses, use the dang dust bag. Those come with the piece when you buy it for a reason, bring it along, use the dust bag. You wanna make sure that nothing gets scratched, nothing gets dented. I don't know, any sort of damage that might come from not using a dust bag. And if you don't have a dust bag or maybe your thing didn't come with one, you can use a tote bag instead. You can use honestly like a plastic bag, whatever you have just to give your piece some extra protection in for shoes. So the dirty soles of the shoes are not touching the rest of what's inside your luggage. One amazing thing to always bring is a separate extra bag for dirty and or wet clothes. I would recommend having two, especially if you are gonna be swimming, if you're going from like place to place. Winding down to our last two, this is something I just, I, I want you guys to really think about it because you know, I'm trying to make your traveling easy breezy and I want you to look fabulous. So penultimately, I want you guys to think of if you're really going to wanna pack the giant hat for your vacation, like those big vacation hats that look fabulous in photos, but if you think through the practicality of trying to travel with that, they don't fit in a luggage, it's a lot more trouble than it's worth. So really consider, is it worth the experience of carrying it around? If the answer is yes, feel free to pack it. Look fabulous in your big hat, but if not, if you're like, wait, 
That's so true. Maybe save it for a staycation instead. If you plan on packing a basket bag, especially if it is a structured one like this, to where it doesn't have any really fold or give, it very much maintains its own shape, make sure you take this as a carry-on and then put it under your seat or in the overhead bin. Because very likely, if you try to pack it, it's gonna get folded, it's gonna get bent, and because of the material that these are made out of, it will never be the same again. But if it's a woven bag like this to where it lays more flat, it has a more like floppy, loose, flexible shape, then something like this is okay to go under the plane, but not something like these two. Basket bags are often an investment and we wanna make sure we protect that investment. And our final section is all about ways to style. Now these are all very particular for certain types of garments that I've seen to be very popular during the summer, being brought on summer trips, and the fashion stresses that come with those pieces. So first up, we've got the front tie. A lot of people, including this lady that I, I literally helped her through a fashion crisis in the fitting room the other day. Now the front tie is present in both tops and dresses. And the problem with this that many people run into is what bra do you wear with this? So basically you have your bra, you have your front tie top. Visually, I think this is going to make a lot more sense than me verbally explaining it, but basically they kind of crisscross underneath the bra strap and then they come out on the other side and then that's where you're going to tie the knot. So by doing this, it creates a wrap around the center of the bra and it hides the fabric of the bra. And then you can kind of just tie as loose or tight as you'd like and you can kind of finagle and judge the fabric to hide any parts of the bra that might be showing. For our bustier gals, if you have worn a button up, you may have noticed the struggle and the issue of there being gaping between the first and the second button. And it is so annoying, it's so frustrating, and it's just not what you want. There are two things you can do to prevent this. Way number one is less permanent and a little bit easier. You're gonna take some of that fashion tape we talked about earlier, and you're just going to apply it between the first and the second button, press the two fabrics together, and no more gaping. Second thing is more permanent. You are going to take a little snappy clasp and you are going to sew it in. It does not need to be any sort of complex sewing, but in between the first and the second button, right in the middle, you're going to just sew the snappy clasp in. It's like a half button right in between that first and second. And this is going to just offer more structure and support. And again, it's going to make sure that there is no gaping and then you have a long-term solution in place. This is your reminder, if you're planning on wearing linen pants, white pants, anything that has a little bit more sheer fabric on the bottom, bring some nude underwear. If you're planning on wearing any sort of shorter dresses or skirts, make sure you have a little pair of spandex or little shorty shorts underneath. Honestly, there's just so many situations where, you know, you can have a little bit of a Marilyn Monroe moment. And finally, one more on a summer dress. If you have a summer dress that is a little bit more on the cleavagey side, a little bit more like, you know, you know what I mean, like a, a lower cut. I've got four ways for you to make your dress a little bit more low key and make the most out of what you pack. Number one, super easy, style a white tee underneath. This is like the classic, like very 90s inspired look. It's super cute for travel and it's kind of a no brainer. You don't have to think twice. Simple white tee underneath, dress over top, you're good to go. Number two, this is probably my favorite go-to. You're just gonna take a lightweight button up and put it over top and you can choose to button it if you'd like. You can also tie the bottom hem of the button up to give kind of a little bit more structure or styling balance to the outfit, or you can also just leave it open. And this is just going to cut down on the amount of decollete you're showing. It's not like super duper like low key, but it's like medium low key. Number three, basically you just take a whole t-shirt, an oversized tee, you can also do a sweater, and you just wear it over top of your dress. I love the juxtaposition between the more oversized, oftentimes more like masculine feeling t-shirt with the very feminine, soft, silky look of a midi or maxi dress. I think it's just gorgeous. I think the contrast is really nice. And finally, number four is to style a vest over top. I am a huge fan of vests as tops, as layering pieces, and this is one case that I think 
a vest buttoned up over top it just creates such a gorgeous look and again it makes the piece more low-key that's wrap on today's video i hope you guys enjoyed the tips and the skit and this video overall you guys know if you've been watching my last couple videos that i have been in my skit era and if you guys have missed the last couple videos where i've had like a fun little skit intro i will link those below and i also hope you guys just got a lot out of this video especially if you were traveling somewhere this summer or anytime upcoming because there's there's truly nothing worse than having like a fashion emergency while you're traveling because you don't have your stuff. So it's nice to be prepared going in, going ahead. And I hope these tips help you. And if you have any tips of your own, any fashion emergency, uh, travel fashion styling tips, please leave those in the comment section because they will for sure help someone out. If you wanna keep up with me outside of YouTube, you guys can find me on both TikTok and on Instagram at Jessica Neistat. And I think that's all I've got for today. Other than I wanna know if you guys have any video requests, make sure to leave those in the comments below as well. I'm planning out my summer content. I took kind of a personal break for a bit. Um, with some things going on in my life. And now that I'm back, I'm very excited to work on some summer content for you guys and make some cool stuff. So let me know what you wanna see in the comments. That's all for me. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I love you all so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.